So we go back to my room that night, and she, I, end up putting my giggle stick in her pork pocket. <laughs> but can I give you some advice? Just don't put your stick crazy. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Red X, your show's for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise swears he's it's just a fact, and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up if you want. It seems that our friend Osgood has finally responded to the heinous accusations that were made toward him in the La Ogra and I guess also the Adelaide saga. If you missed those sagas, links in the description. For those that are all caught up, I know that they're hungry to see this. So, okay, let's knock it right out right now. Osgood story part one. No, I'm not gonna do the voice the whole time, but <laughs> it might be funny. Already the, the title alone has like no punctuation whatsoever. Looking at the post, it looks like a giant wall of text. I'm really not too excited for what comes next, but still, I do want to get the other perspective. So let's see what he got to say. I don't really use Reddit, but Red asked me to post my stuff on his sub, so I went and fired up an account for it so I could tell you my side of the story. That's right, we're nothing, if not reasonable. I have a strong sense of justice, but as long as you're in the right, I mean, you're in the right. So I guess you all know, about Nate's story. Uh, Ramtight is Nate, if you didn't know, <laughs> because he posted it a long time ago to Reddit. It's Reddit with two Ds, buddy. What up, Reddit? And Red X, you did get the two Ds there, that's nice, decided to read it, and that is all that you've heard. It was a couple of years ago now, wasn't it? But I found that story too, and Nate isn't telling the truth. He's omitting a lot of stuff and is clearly portraying himself better than he is. Typical narcissist. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if he's actually a narcissist. He's even more self-loathing than me, if we really get down to it. <laughs> uh, Red X said I could tell my side of the story, so I'm gonna do that. Yeah, you said that already, <laughs> Gooey. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, it's happening again. <laughs> oh, no. Not again. Uh, just move it forward, buddy. I think it's important to set the record straight and show that Nate is a lair. So I'll start at the beginning. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, I do agree. It's important to set the record straight. I hope we'll get uh, the whole story from both sagas and then we can compare and contrast, right? That's real science, trace amounts at least. <laughs> it was maybe 10 or 15 years ago when I met Nate. My mom dropped me off at the Emerald Knights. That was our local game shop. <laughs> Bro, just really doxing everybody. Yeah, that is the game shop that I've played at a couple times. And now I'll never go there again. <laughs> Thanks so much, Francis. If you didn't know Osgood's name is, is Francis. Good, now we've all doxed each other. <laughs> our cards are laid on the table. Uh, so he was standing outside smoking a cigarette and I said, hey. We talked for a bit, and he told me that he ran games. We started talking about magic and games and other nerd stuff because that's what you do when you meet someone new, right? I mean, as long as they're a nerd, I guess. Generally, I want to see people at least three or four times in passing before I initiate a conversation. But he needed players and you were right there, and now I'm the one digressing. Let's continue. <laughs> Well, we became friends, and he invited me to go and play some steampunk game with him, which I thought was totally cool, because I didn't know there were other RPGs besides Dungeons and Dragons, so I said, sign me up, and joined in. <laughs> didn't know there were other RPGs besides Dungeons and Dragons. Bro, there's a whole, a whole world out there. Anything you can imagine, there's an RPG for it. Hey, but what about a Red X RPG? Let me introduce you friends to weirdos and waifus. Get it now for pay whatever you want at ramtide.itch.io. Not speaking to Osgood specifically. Sort of more to the audience. Gotta get those plugs in, you understand? I'm sure Osgood hates it when people give Ramtide money. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it was pretty cool. I got to play with Nate, who I thought was alright at the time, and his sister, who I totally had a crush on for a while, and her boyfriend, who really wasn't that great anyway. <laughs> uh, and for some reason, they invited Herman too, but I didn't know why. Herman is Duster, as we've come to learn. We haven't dropped Adelaide's real name quite yet, so 
I'm grateful for that at the least. <laughs> uh, also, it's hilarious. He's, he's dunking on the boyfriend for no reason. What made him not so great, may I ask? Anyway, Osgood says, I don't like Herman a lot because he'd bully me at the shop and try to take all my stuff. Since he was a lot bigger than me, I mostly just let him do it because I didn't want to get beat up. But then they told me afterwards that he was there because Nate's sister, Sarah, <laughs> damn it, <laughs> is a sadist and wanted to give him trouble. I thought that was cool. So, yeah, we played Tabby Top <laughs> and had a good time. And Nate and his sister made Herman cry. <laughs> Uh, it's like a really good summary of events, you know? So this is chronological. All of this is uh, how the Adelaide saga starts and I guess ends, as I recall. OP says, I thought that was awesome because Herman had made me cry a lot before and it felt good to see the shoe on the other foot. Amen to that. Even if you couldn't get vengeance yourself, I'm glad somebody gave it to you. So Nate made Herman cry and I thought he was cool. And then one day, eh said to me, <laughs> he said to me, hey bro, I need a roommate. I thought about it, and I didn't have much money at the time, but I was working as a greeter at the store, so I was making some money. The store is a, a, a Walmart, according to what we've learned in the Discord blow up. Let's really just lay the, all the cards out, okay? Talk to each other directly. That's why when I correct your grammar or something like that, it's not me trying to upset you. The fact that you're upset is just your ego trying to protect you. If you can look through the hurty part, you can see the truth and maybe try to improve on these things. So yeah, Walmart. Great job to get your feet on the ladder. I'm proud of you for making moves, all right? My mom had been asking me to move out and I didn't want to make her upset, so I had been looking. When Nate asked me if I wanted to move in with him, I thought, hey, that would be great. Him and I were already friends, so it would be cool to live with your friends, right? Yeah, maybe, not really. Uh, have you ever heard the phrase familiarity breeds contempt? Although Nate was sort of one of the only roommates that I never had contempt for. We were just a couple of dudes that had given up, him and I. <laughs> anyway, OP continues. But if I had known what I knew now about him, I wouldn't have done it. Because he's a lair and a bully. <laughs> <laughs> liar is spelled L-I-A-R. A lair is where a dragon sleeps. <laughs> uh, or a lion, or I guess a bear. <laughs> it's like a cave where something lives. Or not even a cave, just like my office is my lair. Whatever. <laughs> this is kind of where the story starts. Yeah, the pertinent La Ogre stuff, I guess. So let's see. So I move in. Everything was cool for the first week or so, but I was already starting to wonder about Nate in that short amount of time. Honestly, I think he's autistic or special or something because he won't talk to people, ever. Especially not in person if he can help it. Yeah, maybe Nate got a touch of the tism. Me too, man. <laughs> it's not a big deal. I think he mostly doesn't talk to people because he despises people. <laughs> I'm sort of the same. I get very insulated, so yeah, I understand where Nate's coming from. OP says, you know, like I'd start trying to talk to him and he would just mumble something and act like I said no thing and go back to whatever he was doing. Some things don't require words, you know? Say less. Were you talking about the thing that he was doing or were you just trying to tell him something about yourself? Because I find that most people do the latter and unfortunately listeners always want the former. But whatever. Uh, Nate puts on a face when he's got to deal with people, and he's real good at acting like he cares or is interested. He says, yup, and uh-huh, and no way in all the right places, but he's almost never listening to anything that you tell him. Try it out sometime. Demonstrably false. I remember Nate remembered that one thing that I told him one time. So there. <laughs> <laughs> it's so non-specific and nebulous, I don't understand how we're supposed to really get a grasp on what is being said. It's just an information dump. There's no scenario that plays this out. It's just like, he is this because I said. Do you understand this is not a very good way to win people to your side? Continuing, I know he's in the Red X Discord server. It's Red X with two Ds, man. <laughs> so you can go and get him in a VC and try it out. 
<laughs> yeah, just ask Nate the VC. That'll work. <laughs> Tell him something and he'll respond like he was listening, but then ask him about what was said and he won't remember any of it. And that is totally C ins. <laughs> you sure about that? <sighs> Maybe days later if we talked about some bullshit. I don't know. But it's not that serious. I don't have that much serious to say anyways. I'm mostly here just to be a, a funny little guy. And you wouldn't want to fight a funny little guy, would you? <laughs> oh, Bobby. Oh, you want? Also, I think Nate is special because he repets the same thing a lot if he really likes it. Like, he'll beat a joke into the ground. Don't get him started on Wiener Inspection Day because he won't let it go. No, don't get me started on it either. That was a 4chan green text video that, that scarred my channel for life. And also, if you haven't noticed, I'm sort of a fan of repetition. Same intro, same outro through basically the entire lifetime of this channel. That's three years of beating jokes into the ground. Let me tell you about Funko Pops and cutting boards. I really would like an example, but uh, I know we're not going to get one. So I can only really talk about it based off of my own experiences. And yeah, Nate does latch on to stuff. But it was usually generally pretty funny. I'm sorry that your sense of humor is more refined than the rest of us. <laughs> uh, so, whatever. All that stuff didn't make me that upset, even though sometimes I thought it was kind of rude. It's difficult to gauge what's more rude. Initiating a conversation to someone who clearly doesn't want it, or ignoring the person that initiated said conversation. I know which side I'm on, but I know some other people have thoughts on that. Like what, Reddick? So you just never want to talk to people? Yeah, exactly. Exactly what you said, that. <laughs> We're supposed to be friends and roommates, but he would just ignore half of the things that came out of my mouth. Even when I was trying to tell him something important. He did it with a lot of people, too. What are the important things you told him? <laughs> uh, it's going to be a bunch of Magic the Gathering or Walmart greeter stuff. And yeah, I'd filter that out, too. You want to talk about big ideas, YouTube empire building and philosophy? Okay, I can latch on to that. That is why Arif and I have clicked in the way that we have. Some people just don't vibe. Just because you're, you're roommates doesn't mean that you have to be best buddies. I understand he's a young, excitable kid. This is his first time and basically just a little puppy running around the house. But yeah, sometimes that energy is too much. <laughs> Especially for people that are as dead inside as Nate. So, okay, he did it with a lot of people. Like who? <laughs> like, whenever my mom would come over and talk about something, he would act like he was listening. <laughs> listening. But, guys, I could just tell. He zonked out, like, half the time. And not even processing what's going on around him. But... She didn't know this, so she probably thought he actually cared about what she had to say and thought she could open up to him, and he ended up using that as leverage against her. And he could satisfy himself because all he thinks about is himself. More on that later. Yeah, a little bit of a sneak peek. I think in the 10 minutes that Osgood raged in the Discord, the banging of the mother was mentioned like three times. But yes, more on that later. As far as him being zonked out or whatever, it doesn't sound like it. It sounds like they're engaging in conversation and you're just coming up with excuses why that's not actually what happened. It's like you're, you're trying to gaslight a community of 26,000 people. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't think that's going to work out for you necessarily. The first one you got to get it past is me and yeah, <laughs> the buck stops here, buckaroo. <laughs> Uh, so, okay, we had been living together for a week or two. I don't know, I wasn't exactly counting it. You count paychecks, don't you? <laughs> I'd always liked magic, because it's the greatest card game ever! <laughs> That's it, this is the best game ever, show the song and dance! Uh, and Wizards does a real good job with it. Uh-huh, sure. <laughs> so, Friday Night Magic was always my thing. I'd go out for the drafts, and it was nice at first, because Herman wasn't at the Emerald Knights anymore, so nobody there was bullying me and taking my pulls, which felt good. And I don't even know if Herman went back there again, and I got to keep all my cards. Well, good, you, you paid for them. You shouldn't be being bullied in public, and you, you sort of do have uh, Ramtide and Adelaide to thank for that much, don't you? 
So even if he was the worst friend in the world, he at least provided you that much. We can agree, yes? So, I guess if you need to drive somebody off, then Nat is good for that. Probably too good at it. Jeez, man, you really feel a certain type of way about this. We've been holding on to this for 15 years. We can't tell the story 15 years later without <laughs> just a, a major league freakout. I think if I heard a story about me 15 years ago, I'd be like, yeah, I was a douche. <laughs> it's all about growth, self-improvement. But to borrow your own words, I guess more on that later. So while we were living together, I had been going out to Friday Night Magic and I'd seen a girl there. And I really liked her, but I didn't know how to approach her, even though I liked her a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, at least you ask, you know? That is breaking out of your shell. That, that's something Elliot Roger never did. So you got that on him. And the whole, you know, not killing people thing. <laughs> hey, Elliot Roger here, enjoying a nice vanilla latte. <laughs> that's pretty important. I tried to approach her that night during Friday Night Magic, but she didn't want anything to do with me and kept circling around her friend group and I didn't know how to talk to her, so I just stared at her for a bit and didn't do anything before heading home. And when I got home, Nate, as usual, was sitting on his ass in front of the TV playing video games and acting like I didn't exist. Look, he's had a long day at work, okay? Daddy's tired. If you'd like to engage, we, we can engage in, in small bursts, but I'm not in need of an information dump of bullshit after I just had a day of it, you know? I feel where he's coming from. <laughs> so OP says, I came in and I said, hey dude, what's going on? And he just kind of grunted at me, like he was some kind of special ed caveman. <laughs> I told you prehistoric times were fun! Uh, uh, <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, not entirely inaccurate in my experience. <laughs> but that's fine. He's tired. He's trying to zone out. I get it. OP continues, well, I sat down and watched him play for a bit before he kind of paused his game to do whatever and finally said, Hey to me after I had been sitting there for almost 20 minutes or so and I didn't know what to say So I told him a bit about my day while he pretended to listen to me And I know he wasn't paying attention because I was telling him about my problems and like every time I'd talk about it He'd say oh, that's cool when it wasn't freaking cool Nate <laughs> You could at least listen to people when they actually say something you a-hole Okay, but where's the proof that he wasn't listening? <laughs> Finally, he started paying attention though, and I guess he heard what I was going on about and said, Oh, dude, I'm sorry you're going through that, and you don't know how to talk to this girl even though you like her. And then he said, maybe he cold helped me, and me being stupid said, Sure, Nate, maybe I could use your help. <laughs> so, he was literally listening to you the entire time. You gave him the rundown of the situation and, and he responded to it. Where was the part where he was not paying attention? <laughs> uh, excuse me? He's helped you once. He, he says he's going to help you again. And the worst thing that you've got to leverage against him is he didn't say hi to me when I came in the door. I'm sorry, but you are not of an officer's rank. And even if you were, I wouldn't do it because I've been a civilian for a long time. Ugh, so... The next few weeks really sucked. I don't think you guys know how much it sucked, to be honest. No, we didn't. That, that's why we're waiting on you to tell the story. <laughs> he woke me up early in the morning and made me work out and made me change my whole wardrobe and lift whites and stop watching smut and told me I shouldn't talk about stuff I like right out the gate with strangers I didn't know. And he was really Adam Anat about all of it and I just kind of played along with it because I thought if I did play along with it maybe he would stop trying to force me to do all this stuff after a while when he thought I was doing it all on my own. Bro, he's trying to give you the glow up that he never had. Do you understand that? You could have been a big boy and used your words and said actually Nate I don't need your help this much. I'll figure it out myself. But instead you just comply and hope that it will stop soon. Which seems to be a recurring theme in your life, uh, unfortunately. 
let Lauren, La Ogra, do whatever she wants and just close your eyes and hope it'll stop soon. Work at Walmart for nearly two decades? Just close your eyes, hope it'll stop soon. Something better will come and fall in your lap. Ah, dude, that's not how it works. You need to push, you need to strive, and I'm not seeing any of that. In my experience, Nate is like the greatest co-pilot ever. Back when I first started YouTube, my parents, grandparents were like, I don't know, probably won't go anywhere. But Nate was like, you can do it. You need to record, I'll give you space. You need me to play guitar for a backing track? If he's too involved, tell him he's too involved. But yeah, he's, he's just trying to help. And I think, I want to believe that in this moment, you were actually excited about it. You're finally getting the interaction from him that you've desperately wanted this entire time. Now with this event 15 years in the rearview mirror, a bunch of vitriol has warped the telling and retelling of this story within your own brain, so you think that's what actually happened. But I almost guarantee that you were on board the entire time. Wow, that's a long diatribe. Okay, continuing. <laughs> Eventually, he did stop, and I guess he lost interest in all of it because he just returned to playing video games and acting like nothing had actually happened. Yeah, because he didn't feel that fire in your belly, dude. He doesn't want to drag you across the finish line. At least start crawling. Show some effort that you're, you're making this happen for yourself. I don't blame him. <laughs> Osgood says, thank God, too because I was getting real tired of having someone policying my own life, which he told me would be all for the better if I did. And yeah, okay, maybe I did feel a little better exercising regularly and eating differently and all of that, but I don't think in the long run it actually did anything to make me better, so I stopped doing it. <laughs> Even hear yourself? Uh, yeah, it made me feel better. But for some reason, I insisted didn't do anything. Come on, man. Stop it. Stop lying to yourself. Stop lying to me. Everybody here sees through this, I'm sure. After a while, your discipline buoy ton breaks, you know? And you gotta cut loose a bit. Okay, but cut loose outside of the discipline that you've built, yeah? <laughs> Maybe I do want to eat the fried chicken and talk about magic, Nate. Did you ever think of that? Or do you only think of yourself? <laughs> uh, you've just painted quite the opposite picture, but okay. And it was about the time when I finally got the hell away from Nate and got a chance to finally be myself again and relax for a week while he binged Xbox that I went back to Friday Night Magic. Yeah, sure, I guess that's right. Just, just run directly towards what's comfortable and I'm sure that'll help you grow and evolve. <laughs> I think that was the part that got to me the most. He was over here telling me what to do like it was going to be the magic bullet for me that would help me get a girlfriend while he just sat on his ass all day eating room temperature pizza and staring into a screen and never actually did any of it for himself. <laughs> room temperature pizza is pretty good though. <laughs> Uh, I think he just likes telling people what to do because it helps him not feel like such a small or irrelevant person when people actually listen to him. But maybe people would actually listen to him if he actually listened to what other people say. Huh? Good luck, though, because I am 100% convinced that he is retraded. <laughs> retraded. <laughs> retreated. Uh, yeah, maybe he's been passed around a little bit. <laughs> God, dude. Uh, he definitely does like to help in order to not feel irrelevant, like his life is passing him by. That's as good a reason as any, and he is actually quite helpful. And I'll say again, so far we've been shown zero evidence that he's actually not listening to people, that he actually does zone out. I think he's just filtering out brain vomit, oral garbage. But if you're sincere, I know he holds on to things that matter. I seen it. Of course, all this happened before I came along. I'm still in the Navy during all of this, I think. So maybe he was like this and just was changed by the situation. Sure, yeah, l let's say that. <laughs> I finally catch a break from having to deal with him back at the apartment when F and M rolled around. Friday Night Magic. 
and I go to Magic that Friday, and I'm hanging out at the store, and I'm kind of looking at the girl who I had the crush on, and I thought maybe I should go talk to her, but I still didn't feel like I was brave enough to do it, so... Yeah, I just walked around the store because I thought all the hell that Nate put me through would have been the thing that would make me able to talk to the girl, but apparently it didn't do that, and I still couldn't go up and talk to her. You never completed your training, Padawan. <laughs> and I don't know why, but I guess Nate never really prepared me to go and talk to people or whatever, so yeah, I just walked around like a loser. And somehow that is Nate's fault. <laughs> Uh, you couldn't find it within yourself to walk over there and be like, Hey, how you doing? We both like magic. Want to talk about magic? It's probably not the ideal way to go, but it's a safe route. <laughs> I was somewhere over by the front desk when I first met Lauren, La Ogra. And I was grateful because she actually approached me and said, Hey, and I asked surprised that a girl had gone out of her way to talk to me and I tried to remember what Nate had said about not being weird when I first talked to people so I did my best and just said hey back to her good start best start you're doing great <laughs> we hit it off pretty quick and stardaced talking about our interests and our hobbies and I kind of figured out that all of Nate's advice on how to actually change yourself for the better was just a bunch of BS that he thought sounded good because at that point, I had been doing my own thing for a couple weeks now and I wasn't having any problem talking to Lauren at all. Yeah, but Lauren's not the girl that you like. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Is there a physical attraction there? May I ask that much? I've heard at the very least that she doesn't smell yeasty all the time anymore, which is good, you know? We're all making progress within our own lives. <laughs> uh, to be Hansed, she was an easy person to talk to. She's a predator. <laughs> and it was like she knew all the right things to say to make me feel good. And she didn't mind that I was kind of awkward about it because I didn't really know what I was doing, but she was super understanding. So I didn't worry about T too much. And I figured maybe I could invite her back to my house. You sure could, that is the thing that you could do. Or, let's go talk to the manic pixie dream girl that you're actually interested in. Two paths lay before you here, young Osgood. Which will you choose? And through the power of hindsight, I guess we know. <laughs> she really liked the idea of going back to my house and eventually her and I would move in together and Shed become my fiance, but we aren't there yet. So, well, get to all that later, because I'm sure you guys want to know what all that's about. Yeah, basically the only reason we're all sitting here. <laughs> and also trash-talking Nate, I guess. Special Ed Caveman LARPing as a pirate captain. Writing the greatest, most undervalued tabletops that mankind has ever seen, such as Blood and Thunder, a pirate RPG now available on ramtide.itch.io. You can pay what you want, but I'm sure Osgood would hate if you gave him money. <laughs> I said that already, but that's fine. We're looping it around. Continuing. So, we finally get back to the apartment, <laughs> and surprise, Nate is still sitting there in font of the TV. And it's been like five hours since I left for the Emerald Knights by now, but he hasn't moved an inch. And he's probably drooling on himself a bit, because he's a mouth breather. <laughs> uh, it's his time off, man. If he wants to lay there and drool on himself for eight hours, you let him do it. I know you guys and hear that too when you get on VC, because he always sounds like he's out of breath. And I know why. It's because he can't shut his mouth. Least not to breathe anyway. Oh, see, the analogy doesn't work because he doesn't talk all that much. I'm pretty sure when he's out of breath, he's like, you know, hiking around. It could also be two decades of pack a day smoking, but I am in no position to judge him on that. <laughs> well, we get in there and guess what? He just kind of grunts at me again as we come in, acting like we don't exist. And I just kind of tell Luarin, don't mind him, he's not all there. And she says, okay! So yeah. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we gotta pass him. Uh, but as soon as we do, he shoots up. And he's like, who the hell did you bring into my home, Osgood? I don't like her. I mean, he scoped her out. I don't know what you expected. Big girl like that, you're supposed to sneak around the back door. Up through the window or something. I just hope you got a real strong ladder. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, all right now this is kind of weird even coming from a weirdo like him i wouldn't put it past him to act weird around anybody because he's not right but yeah <laughs> what <laughs> he gets all up in my face right there and is asking me all these weird questions like oh where did you meet the girl? What the hell is this? And why is she in my house? Even after I had asked him like an hour ago if I could have a visitor come over. And he was totally cool with it. Yeah, normal visitor. Not blatant predator. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't understand what the big deal was. But I said, it's cool, dude. We're just going to go and hang out in my room. And you don't got to worry about it. We won't bug you and you could go back to doing whatever weird sh** it was that you were doing and you won't even know that we exist. I honestly don't think the conversation goes the way that you remember it going. Like I said, your brain has rewritten this in order to protect your own ego. We, we've had a, a decade and a half of twisting and contorting this memory within our brains. Maybe it's not 100% accurate. Would you consider that? I'm sure Ramtide would. I'm sure if you ask him straight up, he'd be like, yeah, I took some creative liberties there. I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings, dude. But you didn't do any of that. You, you, you blew up and, and made a spectacle, and now everybody's just here watching you lie. <laughs> uh, uh, it is frustrating. So he just kind of replies like he's all pissed off about it. Whatever, dude. Don't bother me when I'm playing my video games. Cheer you kids in your video games, let me tell you, when I was younger, all we had was a box of rocks. You could shake it, you could dump the rocks out and count them, and let me tell you, we loved it! <laughs> uh, so we go back to my room that night, and she, I, end up putting my giggle stick <laughs> in her... <laughs> Uh, putting my giggle stick in her pork pocket. <laughs> but can I give you some advice? Just don't put your stick crazy. Uh, and losing my virginity. <laughs> uh, it's possibly the greatest sentence ever constructed by the hand of man. <laughs> Uh, yeah, giggle stick in the pork pocket, and then you lose your virginity. <laughs> and I figure, you know, everything is cool, and now I've got myself a girlfriend, and life can move on. And maybe Nate can be happy for me, and finally get off my back. But that's definitely not what happened, because in the coming days, I saw Nate's true colors for what they really were, and they were not pretty. I'll grant you that, okay? Nate did a not pretty thing. But his reason for doing the not pretty thing, that's at least slightly noble. Did he take it too far? Absolutely. But you wasn't seeing logic, friend. He just ended up wedged between a rock and a stinky place. <laughs> I'll be back soon enough to tell you all about that when I get some more time to write. <laughs> yeah, right. R-I-G-H-T, right. <laughs> uh, oh man, Lauren has gotta go out right now and I gotta watch her son. Well, she got a kid? Is it your kid? Ah, oh, crap. <laughs> this is getting deep. And there's other stuff I gotta do. If y'all have any questions, you're welcome to ask them here on this post or wherever Red decides to share this, and I'll take a look and see which ones I want to answer. You should answer all of them, but I get it. It's overwhelming. <laughs> I'll tell you guys more about everything that happens when I get some free time. Yep, you said that already. Okay. See you later, narrator. <laughs> An unreliable narrator at that. 
I'm terrified that La Ogre has reproduced. The plot is indeed thickening up. There's more to this than we know, but I am eager to dive into some more. If you guys would like some more as well, the Adelaide Zaga is linked on the end card. Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, you definitely, definitely deserve it, and I shall see you in the next one. So until then, uh, bye bye Go ahead, cut him open. It's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine! Promise swears he is just a fact.